Okay guys, in the previous session you had an unexpected and potentially deadly altercation with a perilous potato that almost claimed Rar's life. You managed to acquire the vital supplies for the path ahead. Leaving the sanctity of the temple's venerable halls, you descended its ancient steps pausing for a heartfelt exchange between Alexandru and Master Shenzu, a promise of safe return hanging heavily in the air. As we begin this session, you find yourselves in the tender moments of farewell as the formidable gates ahead slowly rumble open. Stepping forth, you cast a lingering glance backward, observing every individual bestowing upon you a respectful bow as a silent pact of goodwill and hope just before the monumental doors solemnly converge, sealing your path forward. All right, well, which direction are we heading to find these gobos? Well, when they came in the past, they came from the north. So I presume that's the direction we should start going in. You really don't have a fucking clue, do you? Nope, but I've already said this. It's gonna be a case of us tracking them down. All right then, let's make our way a little bit to the north. Then I say we should start to do a little bit of investigating to see if we can see any tracks or something left behind by them. I mean, I know you said they last turned up a while ago, but I can imagine that goblins and so many of them at that would leave quite the mess behind them. Okay, Rar, have you ever had a run in with gobos? Does that sound viable? I'm hoping you're asking me that question because you know that I'm well versed in traveling the lands, not because we're both green. But yeah, goblins are as scruffy as they come. Leave crap everywhere, don't give a toss. Can't cook for nothing either. You can sniff their awful attempt at a stew from miles away. And by God, their idea of a song? It consists of screaming and banging on pots all night. It sounds like you're quite familiar with them. Oh yeah, you humans have your elves and dwarves as distant kin. We orcs get stuck with the damn goblins, occasionally traded with them, seeing as we're both kind of societal rejects in a way. But enjoying their company? Nah, they're puny, sly, always angling to con you, rob you, or stir up some sort of chaos. I know I'm painting with a broad brush. There's got to be a few decent ones out there somewhere, but I'll be buggered if they ain't rare. Okay, Joe. We begin to make our way northward, making sure to scour the area as we go for any indication of the goblins passing through. The northern path, unknown to most yet vaguely familiar to Alexandru from his occasional foraging ventures, lays open before you. Your journey from the east still lingers in memory, with the hill you ascended to reach the sanctuary now gently sloping down towards a distant, shimmering ocean, glimpses of it peeking through the dense tree line. Venturing northward, your eyes are graced with a rather serene spectacle. Vast expanses of gentle rolling plains, occasionally punctuated by sporadic clusters of trees without a clear-cut path to dictate your journey. Off to the west, the eminent Port Sea summits unveil themselves, their majestic peaks serving as a remarkable divider between the coastal regions and the extensive stretches of mainland Auroros. There's a silent strength in their stature, a timeless watch over the lands that have birthed countless stories, including your own unfolding tale. As you navigate through the serene yet undetermined trail, you find yourselves vigilantly scanning the environment, eyes and ears attuned for any whisper of goblin activity Activity, any disturbance in the tranquility of the landscape that might herald their chaotic presence. I want to make an investigation check, Joe, to see if there are any oddities in the area. Roll it. That's a 21 total, Joe. With the soft whisper of the wind playing through the trees, your footfalls come to a halted crunch upon the autumn leaves as your eyes catch a peculiar sight. A series of inconspicuously rudimentary contraptions lay scattered ahead, an unsophisticated yet oddly cunning array of traps. Crude snares made of disjointed twigs and mismatched stringy vines lie hidden amidst the foliage, alongside pits shoddily covered with a fragile weave of branches and leaves. There's an almost tragic humor in the almost childlike attempts at subterfuge, and you can't help but marvel at the raw, untutored intellect that fashioned them. Well, these traps are absolute garbage. Yeah, these certainly look like they were made by gobblers. Joe, I give one of the traps a little nudge. Okay, your steps become mindful, a mixture of curiosity and cautious respect for the minimal menace these traps may still pose. Gently, your boot nudges a stick, observing as it tilts a hidden rock, which abruptly loosens a small pile of stones aimed to tumble upon an unsuspecting traveler. Your senses heighten, the air almost thickening with a tangible trepidation as your gaze traces the spattering of these makeshift hazards, snaking into the encroaching tree line. It's within this nervous stillness that a muted form hanging awkwardly amidst the looming shadows of the trees grasps your collective attention. 
Your cautious steps guide you closer, the crisp rustling of your movement contrasting with the stifled silence of the forest ahead. Then you see it. It's a goblin, its sallow green skin pallid in the dappled sunlight filtering through the leaves, dangles limply from a counterweight trap, its leg awkwardly twisted in the poorly crafted rope snare. Huh, well, isn't that just pitiful? Be careful, guys. This could be a lure to get us in closer. True. I approach the strung up goblin carefully and see what's going on. You approach, your senses sharp, every instinct alert to the potential for deception or ambush. Yet the scene that unveils before you speaks not of malice, but a pitifully tragic misadventure. A weak gurgle emanates from the goblin, its once lively eyes now glossed with a pained resignation. The motley array of gear strapped to its back, likely salvaged from ill-fated adventurers or stolen from unwatched camps, rustles softly as it sways ever so slightly in an unfelt breeze. Abandoned, injured, and now forgotten by its own, this pitiable creature, in an ironic twist of fate, has become the unintended victim of its own ilk's carelessly devised machination. Your party stands there amidst the silently judging trees, caught in a tense moment of ethical quandary and veiled vulnerability, in the pallor of its weakly heaving chest and the desperate surrender in its eyes. Oh God, it's still alive. Have no fear, my dear Saxy. I can fix that for us. Wait, buddy, we don't want to do anything too rash after all. It may be able to tell us where the rest of them are based. I approach the goblin Joe, giving it a few small slaps on the cheek before saying, well, hello there, sunshine. Fancy telling us where the rest of your miserable horde is? Tronald, do you want to- Way ahead of you, Saxy. Alexandru, I can take the lead on this if you want. What's wrong with the way I'm doing it? Oh, nothing at all. It's just that maybe there's a more efficient way to get the answers that we want. Whilst I appreciate your support, I feel more than comfortable with my ability to get answers from it myself. Yeah, okay, sure, man. Just let us know if you need any help. Joe, I slapped the goblin again a little bit harder this time. Oi! Sunshine, it's time to wake up. Okay, a glint alights in your eyes, Alexandru, as you raise your hand in the air before landing a resounding slap upon the suspended goblin. The creature's body recoils, frenetic energy surging through its limbs, causing it to wriggle and writhe amidst the air with an almost fish-out-of-water desperation. An unwitting performance of flailing and confusion ensues. This bewildering struggle continues unabated for at least a minute, the goblin's limbs contorting and spasming in a bizarrely enchanting spectacle, while it appears to momentarily disregard the precarity of its elevated predicament. Got your attention now? Its eyes, once adrift in a sea of panicked confusion, suddenly snap towards you, narrowing with a mingling of perplexed irritation and weary resignation. A creaky, vexed voice spills from its lips. What the fuck do you want? I want you to tell me where the rest of you little shits are hiding. The fuck if I know? They ain't around here though, are they? Otherwise I'd be with them, not talking to you, you pigskin freak. Look. You're going to tell me where your horde is based. Otherwise, I'm going to begin beating the shit out of you. Then I will proceed to continue to beat the shit out of you until there is no more shit left to beat. Would be proper scary that if I hadn't chalked myself up as worm food since getting snagged in this bleeding trap. So go on then. Give it your best shot, you lily-livered sack of elf puke. Ain't nothing you can do that's gonna make me shake. All right then, Joe. I crack my knuckles and prepare for an absolute beatdown. Joe, I step in front of Alexandru, resting my hand against his chest and giving him a look, indicating for him to go along with this. Okay, I hold back for now. I turn around to the gabo before giving him a smile and saying, apologies for the abruptness of our companion. He does struggle, shall we say, with the finer points of communication. We've wandered these lands, heard tales and whispers of your horde's remarkable might and dominance in these parts. Respectable, truly. And you see, it's that very power, that impressive presence, that brings us to you now. The goblin's mottled jaw slackens, poised on the precipice of speech, yet as your words cascade forth, a subtle metamorphosis transpires in the creature's demeanor. His mouth, once agape, begins to gradually fuse shut. We seek your horde not for confrontation, but for parley. A generous gift is what we bear for you, a tribute, if you will. We come to you with the hope of presenting this offering as a gesture of respect and goodwill, aspiring for a dash of assistance in return with the potential of great mutual benefit. So how about it, friend? Roll me a deception check, Tronald. Not great, that's an eight, but I'm going to use one of my luckies to re-roll it. Better, that's a 15. All right, with a roll of 15, your gaze locks with the goblin, observing meticulously as his eyes, once wide with a blend of defiance and skepticism, incrementally narrow into scrutinizing slits. A pause pregnant with anticipation bathes the encounter, every second drawing out like an eternity as he mulls over your carefully spun words. And then, breaching the heavy silence, the goblin grumbles, Oi, then why didn't your mate kick off with that, huh? 
There ain't no need for slapping and bullying, not when you're trying to get cozy with someone for a nice, friendly-like deal. Why does the goblin sound like that? That's just how he sounds. Is that okay? Fair enough. So where can we find the rest of you? Oi! How about first you get me down from this blinking noose, eh? Then we can have a nice chinwag about all them sparkly treasures you're promising to lug our way. Else we might just keep dangling here, dancing the jiggly foot dance, and ain't nobody gonna chat about no gifts, no deals, no nothing. I pull out my great axe and take a slice at the rope which is holding him up. Rawr, the corners of your mouth twitch upwards ever so slightly, amusement alighting your stern, orcish features as you unsheathe your great axe. With a fluid motion, you let the hefty blade arc through the air, its path a deliberate trajectory toward the rope. The sharp steel slices cleanly through and the goblin, previously suspended and conversing from his lofty predicament, tumbles downward with a mixture of surprise and panic scrawled across his crude features. He collides with the hard-packed earth beneath him, a resounding crack punctuating the abrupt end of his descent. There's a moment of silence, punctuated only by the faint rustling of leaves in the overhead canopy. His body crumples into an untidy heap, his limbs akimbo. Oblivious to any potential threat, the goblin groggily shakes his head, muttering an array of colorful curses and expletives as he gingerly rubs the emerging lump on his scalp. Then, as if suddenly remembering his circumstances, he snaps his head upwards, eyes narrowing into slits as they dart suspiciously between you all. With a crouch that resembles a wary feline, he scampers hastily toward you, Tronald, an incongruous mix of apprehension and demanding curiosity evident in his hunched posture and bared teeth. What's he doing? I honestly have no idea, but let's just let it play out. He begins peering at you closely, his nostrils flaring as he sniffs, trying to detect any hint of concealed treasures. A gnarly finger jabs towards your robe, yanking it upwards with no concept of personal space or manners, his other hand patting roughly at any hidden pockets or crevices. With an accusatory squint, he jabs a dirty fingernail into your side, demanding in a gruff, skeptical growl, Oi, where's all this shiny loot then, eh? You think Gob is a mug, do you? Show me the shinies, or I might think you're playing Gaba for a fool. Huh, how about that? A Gabo named Gaba. What are the odds? Probably higher than you'd initially think. I mean, sure, some goblins get some extremely creative names given to them, but then again, they're usually the ones who have potential greatness seen in them, at least as far as goblins go. The rest just get stuck with names like Gobba. Oi, what you got a problem with Gaba, huh? Me Papa Gubba, he gave me this name he did. Right after his own Papa Gibba, met his end under a rampaging goat. May his soul rest in peace or pieces or whatever. So you make fun of Gaba, you're making fun of Gubba and Gibba. And let me tell you, ain't no one makes fun of the great lineage of the Bars without getting a piece of Gaba's mind. Got it? Um, I'm a little confused. Was your father Gibba or Gobba? Gaba's eyes seem to practically roll out of his head as he slaps his filthy hands to his face in exaggerated exasperation. By the sloppy swamps, are you daft? I'm Gaba, me right here. As for Gubba, G-U-B-B-A, that's me papa, and don't get me started on my grandpapa Gibba. His arms flail wildly as he speaks with occasional points to himself, then away into the imaginary distance as if he could summon the spectral images of Gubba and Gibba to clarify the familial chain. He continues an incredulous chuckle rasping from his throat. I understand you big greenies are a bit soft around the noggin, but come on. I thought even the likes of you might manage to track a bit of Gabo lineage, especially when it's as storied and exquisite as that of the Boz. What the fuck am I even listening to right now? You know what? He's kind of endearing. Saxy, can we keep him? No, Tronald. You're not allowed any more pets. Not after the last one you had betrayed us. You raise an excellent point. So, Gabba, whereabouts would we find the rest of your companions so we could give them our mighty gift? How about you give old Gabba a little peep at this mighty gift of yours first, huh? Then maybe, just maybe, I might be inclined to yap out where you might find the boss and the rest of the rowdy bunch. Okay, we would be more than happy to show you. You see, we had it designed especially for him. It's armor that can instantly wrap itself around him. It will also make him huge and feared across the lands even more than he already is. I pull out a gold coin and continue to say to him, you see this, if he learns the secrets of this coin, the armor will do his bidding. Then I try to sneakily activate my armor so he doesn't see me press the mechanism. Ooh, tricky. All right, Saxy, I'm gonna need you to make a sleight of hand check for me. That's a 24 total, Joe. 18 plus 6. Very nice. Saxy, with deliberate slowness, you extract a singular gold coin, letting it dance tantalizingly in the faint light. Your eyes, a well of calm sincerity, lock with the goblins as you weave your tail. As the words flow, your fingers, masterful and sly, dance over the concealed mechanism of your own armor, a finesse disguising your true intentions. With a subtle click, barely audible beneath the blanket of your smooth dialogue, a mechanical spectacle unravels. 
before the goblin's wide, unblinking eyes. From unseen compartments in your belongings, panels of meticulously crafted metal emerge, converging around you in a cascade of enchanting armor assembly. Each piece locks into place with precision, enhancing your form with an intimidating yet majestic mantle of might, while your expression remains soft and unthreatening. Goba's eyes, once beams of suspicion, balloon in a cocktail of awe and bewilderment, his grizzled, mud-streaked face etching a mural of emotions as he witnesses the marvel encasing you. His guard shatters, momentarily eclipsed by the mechanical wonder unfurling before him. Blight and blunder. That's a bloomin' miracle, that is. Ain't never seen nothing like it in all me days. Listen, I'ma take you straight to Boss Snagglegut Firemantle meself, I Can't have you wandering all willy-nilly and getting lost in these tricky woods now, can we? Well, Gubba, we'd be grateful if you just told us how to get there. We can manage from here and ensure your boss gets his gift. Nah, nah, ain't gonna happen. It's a two-day trot, and these woods ain't kind of strangers. Gaba's gonna lead the way. Make sure you present this marvel right to boss Snagglegut Firemantle proper. I want to see the look on his mug when you hand over this beastly magic, yeah? Sides, this be a chance for Gaba, son of Gubba, grandson of Gibba, to shine a bit, you know? To pull his weight and all in the eyes of the boss and the lads. Well, um, sure, if you insist. This is great. Not only have we got a guide, but it will give Goba a chance to shine and show them all how they really screwed up by leaving such a magnificent gobbo out here by himself. Hey, I reckon I'm starting to warm to this one, you know? As he points a dirty, clawed finger at you, Tronald, his other hand rubbing his chin thoughtfully. Huh, speaks sense, he does. All honey-like with his words, but not in the sly, sneaking way. Nah, there's truth there. I can sniff it out. Maybe there's something to be said about these big folk after all. Besides, it's high time the lads back home saw what Gaba can bring to the table. And with your fancy tricks and gifts, they're gonna remember this day. Ooh, boy, they will. Well, I like you too, Gaba. Let us begin our journey to the boss man. Aye, right, make haste, new pal. Gaba leads the way, and what a tale we'll spin. Us lot together. With an oddly graceful nod, Gaba turns to lead the way. His movements, peculiarly entwined with both sprightliness and a disjointed limp, conjure an unexpected sense of urgency and awkward agility. He scuttles ahead, his back slightly hunched, one leg dragging just a tad more than the other, yet his pace remarkably swift, despite its oddity. His hands occasionally graze the earth as he maneuvers through the terrain, weaving a path for you all to follow. All right, Joe, once I'm sure that Gaba is out of earshot, I turn to Tronald and say, you do realize that this Gabo isn't actually our friend, right? Who says he isn't? I mean, yeah, he's a goblin, but it sounds like the rest of them have been awful to him. I say. I say he isn't. As soon as he finds out our true intentions, do you think he would hesitate in the slightest in joining the rest of them to try and kill us? As a matter of fact, he wouldn't even be helping us right now if he didn't think he was going to get some kind of reward or praise for bringing us to his boss. I just have a soft spot for outcasts, it seems. Well, snap out of it. Goblins are all the same. All they want to do is cause destruction and loot. Right, well, by that logic, what about orcs? Are orcs all the same, Alexandru? You're totally missing my point. These are literally the goblins that have threatened my monastery's peace for the last few years. Alexandru, goblins follow orders or they die. That's it. Boss says fight, they fight. Boss says steal, they steal. Ain't about evil, it's surviving, same as us. They're little, scared, and they're just trying to make it through. We all got our paths, right? You know what? You've actually raised an incredible point there, Rar. Maybe it's not a case of taking down the whole horde, but instead taking out the main circle of them. But I'm going to be honest, it would still be a long shot. Well, we've got options, and we've got two days to figure out them options. I'm not opposed to going with our original plan, but maybe there is a safer way. A better way. It's at this point Goba's voice pierces through the muted rustlings of the forest, a cheerful, crude timbre dancing with an odd friendliness. Oi, slow pokes! Get your boots moving quicker, eh? You're lagging behind. All right, guys, we can discuss more of this later. For now, though, let's just keep up with him. Joe, we speed up and make our way towards Gaba. As you hasten your steps to catch up, the path ahead unwinds uncertainly into the wilderness, leading you towards the goblin horde. And with a journey of two days ahead, decisions hang in the air. And that is where we will finish this session. See you later, guys.